And so the soot went all throughout the house. Huh. And so we had to pack out the entire house, clean every square inch of it, you know, do a little bit of painting, minor recon, and then put everything back just because the dog jumped up on the range and lit on fire. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Break It Down with Braden. Super excited. I got Ryan Reedy on here and Brian Green. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, these guys are with Square One Restoration um, and just absolutely killing it out there. Um, fixing up homes, I guess, or uh, helping remediate homes. So I probably just didn't do it any justice. So why don't you guys <laughs> tell them what you guys do and how you're uh, here today? Right, right. So we're Square One Restoration. We do water, fire, mold remediation, um, asbestos abatement. Uh, essentially, we do the emergency service when you have um, flood, fire, smoke damage, whatever it is. Um, if you're out of town and your dog watching person catches your house <laughs> flooding, we're the guys that you call. You know, it's two in the morning, you need help. So we'll come remove the water, mitigate the loss, set it up to, to dry out and demo anything that needs to come out. Love it. So. And Brian, what's your role? Uh, I am the business development manager. Yeah. So I've been with Ryan since September of last year. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So my role is basically bringing in all new business. Yep. Um, we've been around for about four years now. Up until I joined, they were kind of sustaining based on his previous relationships. Yep. Um, so my role was to come in and bring in new adjusters that I had had from my previous position in this industry, yep. as well as develop hundreds of more. So... Yeah. What is the day-to-day -day world of the restoration companies? Like, what are you? So it's dealing with emergencies and people going through really difficult times. So, you know, it's, it's everything from, um, you know, we had a small leak because the ice maker broke, you know, kind of a nuisance loss yep. to something like we're dealing with today where um, a toilet supply line popped and the whole house flooded. You know, it probably went on for 24 hours. The whole house is, is destroyed. So... We're going through, we're uh, flood cutting everything, drying it out, removing flooring. And a lot of times you've got contents in there too. So personal property and such where it's an emotional experience. So we try to take the time to, you know, connect with the person and walk them through it. And sometimes it's pretty difficult. But uh, Breaking apart a house obviously is, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, what's kind of your background? How did you, how did you get into this? Right. So I have a pretty heavy background in real estate investment and finance and such. Um, I was building houses, doing flips up until about four years ago, I thought the market might take a turn. So I wanted to get into recession resistant, which I was wrong. Real estate's killing it still, but, um, it's a good place to be. So we got into insurance work. That's not market based. So it's like your water heater pops, your house floods something catches on fire like we were talking about earlier. Yep. You know, it happens all the time. So that's kind of how I got into it. But my background is mostly construction, real estate investment. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, your background in construction is kind of what helps you stand out a little bit too is the fact yeah. that you know, you know, what it all entails to go into these properties. Right. It, it helps a yeah. lot to know kind of the mm. construction of homes and such because we try to be – we like to kind of coin like we're restorers, not destroyers. So yep. it's a lot of companies that go in, they just shred your house. And it's because they're going to get the construction side and it's a bigger construction job. Yep. But we try to actually use techniques and specialty equipment where we save a lot of things. And so understanding how homes are constructed has been helpful in those strategies. Um, why would an insurance adjuster want to work with you guys? Um, I think some of our methods are a little different than other companies. So kind of as he explained it, uh, many companies want to go in and unnecessarily cut or, you know, rather than a standard two foot cut, they try to sneak in a four foot cut or it's not a straight line. Um, just little things that kind of add up the total cost of the job. We don't do that. We pride ourselves with using a different techniques to dry in place. Um, so if a loss is not extreme enough to warrant flood cutting the entire room, what yep. we'll do is pop off the baseboard, drill little bur burr holes, and we'll actually do what's called dry in place with this crazy so octopus you guys did, looking. That's what you did in my house. Yeah, sounds, that sounds familiar. Yeah, so yeah. you see our <laughs> injector. I call it the octopus. So. Right. Um, yeah. So we do a lot of techniques like that. Um, but in addition, you know, him having the background in building, it's 
we're really respectful of the fact that there's another contractor in right after us. Yep. And so with that, everything that we do is with that next person in line in mind, right? So you'll never find um, janky cuts on our flood cuts. You'll never find nails in the stud, debris, anything like that. All of that is cleaned out long before we get in. In addition to that, we have happy homeowners and we take a lot of the stress from that adjuster off of their shoulders. Um, our motto is to just kill them with kindness and very often they're frustrated and yell or get snarky and angry with us. And by the end of the day, our guys are so good that they usually come back and apologize to us and yep. are willing to work with us. So that's a huge relief to adjusters because it alleviates their voicemails and yeah. text messages. Yeah, it takes the stress off of them. I mean, you got to think like they're going through, you know, they may have 200 year old antique from, right. you know, great, great, great grandma that just got destroyed. So it doesn't matter like who you are coming in there, they're in a bad mood. Yep. So you just gotta kill them with kindness, work through it. But we call our demo designer demo because it's super clean, we prep everything. So like plastic everywhere, um, negative air pressure, air scrubbers, all that to make it really clean. Like she's saying, straight lines, no nails, get it ready for the next guy. So then your general contractor comes to put it back together. He's not complaining about the guys before him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Brian, you made mention that you were at another company before that was kind of same similar field. Why, uh, why Square One? Um, well, it's kind of interesting. So I've been in restoration seven, eight years on and off. Um, I actually worked for a contents company. He had mentioned that before. Um, I always explained it as if you cut the roof off the house, turn it upside down, anything that falls out is our purview. Got it. Um, I was there for quite a while, had different roles ranging from admin to biz dev to their GM for a time. And it was not entirely conducive with my lifestyle. Yep. I'm a single mother of a little kid, so working 60 hour weeks is very difficult to do. Um, I left and dabbled in the independent adjusting arena, so working with uh, an adjusting firm that went out on behalf of the carrier to estimate claims and you know settled the loss. In addition, they also owned a plumbing and electrical company. It was very interesting. Yeah. I learned a lot, built it from the ground up, and realized that I just really, really missed restoration. Um, I took about a month off to kind of figure out what did I want to do, and I decided I wanted to be with a company that provided the emergency service that was there at the moment of most distress yep. that can you know, um, potentially build a relationship and change the experience for that homeowner. I had known Ryan from my time in content, so when I saw his posting, I didn't apply anywhere else. I just submitted that, and that was all she wrote. We did a, what, three-hour interview that was literally yeah. just us catching, <laughs> catching up, up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and I was sold. So. Oh, funny. So you guys knew each other before? <laughs> yeah, so we worked together. So when we had a big flood or something fire, you know, all you the contents were damaged. I'd call Brianna at, at her company, and then they'd come in and manage all the contents. Yep. So, yeah, so we had some experience together, and then... Yeah, she applied and just kind of talked for a couple hours and we're like, it's a good fit, let's go. Yep. We had been hassling him, trying to sell him on our services for quite a while and he wasn't totally sold until one day he just randomly called and said, hey, I need someone, I don't know anyone. And I think it was the next day we called and invited you and a competitor, oddly enough, to a Cardinals game. And still to this day, we work hand in hand with that competitor, trading yeah. overflow and, oh, those guys are and great. the like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit of a tough sell for salespeople. So I just kind of blow them off until see how persistent they are. Yep. But then, you know, you get the companies that really care and keep coming back, so. Absolutely. Um, what's your favorite part about it? About square one? Yeah. Um, I, it's the core values, honestly. Um, and They're plastered up on our walls. We take them to events. Um, we post about it all the time on social media. It's, it's Ryan really does actually care. And, and that extends not just to our homeowners, but also to the employees. There are not many restoration companies out there that invest long term in their guys and as such have a huge turnover rate. And I know this from being in that GM position yep. and having to you know, mitigate those circumstances. Ryan invests back in us with health insurance, 401k, team building events quarterly. He actually cares about our work-life balance, yeah. and that extends into what we do. Um, it's kind of like happy wife, happy life, yep. happy employees, better product, so. Love that. Mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona, which one is more prevalent? Is it fires, floods, or mold? Um, 
So mold is definitely a factor. People think like, you know, we live in Arizona, we're not going to have mold. Let's just let it sit there and dry out. Right. That's that's not the case, you know. So we do have mold as a result of one of the others, so flood or fire. Yep. Um, so in fires, you've got the firefighters coming in, destroying the house because they have to make sure it's not spreading, whatever. And then they'll <laughs> hose it down and create a fire, a flood, and a mold job for us because it. it sits there for a while. Oh, funny. Okay. But um, we we do mostly water jobs. Okay. But in terms of how many there are in the state, it's yeah, yeah. actually pretty even statistically. You'd Between be, fire and, and flood. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's also kind of feast or famine with every section, right? So monsoon season is a prime example. You're going to see more flooding. Yeah. But in the wintertime, you see just an abnormal amount of fires. I mean, even this month, we're seeing just a huge amount of fires all around town, ranging from grandma left the Tupperware in the microwave to total loss, whole house burnt down, yep. horribly tragic. I was actually just telling him a story before we got started. There was a, one of our neighbors, not like across the street, but within a couple of miles. Uh, they had a plumber over there and he was fixing a pipe and a spark shot up into the pipe, went up into the oh, attic, lit the whole attic on fire with all the insulation. Oh man. Their entire roof burnt down. Oh no. So yeah. it's like... And yeah. th those kind of things are very interesting. So I actually, when I was in contents, we were in a house packing it out for a whole house flood. Um, I, I think the water heater exploded through the master closet and water just went everywhere. It was chaos. Uh, while we're packing out the bathroom, the, the window over the shower had light coming through, reflecting off the mirror, caught our packing material on fire while all of our guys oh my gosh. are in the house. So now you've got two claims. You've got water to fire, which is really unique because usually it's the reverse. Right, you have fire right. turning yeah. it to water. Yep. So yeah. yeah. And that thing that kind of thing happens like more than you know. So I've had one where it was the same thing, the sun hitting a dog bowl that went to the side of the house, lit it on fire. What? And then we had another one in Old Town where the dog the, the people were in home. The dog jumped up on the range and he twisted the gas knob, started the range, a, a gas fireplace, yeah. yeah, gas range, and it lit the plastic cooking board. Um, it didn't cause like much flames and fire, but it was synthetic material. So it like it has this um, like oily soot. And so the soot went all throughout the house. Huh. And so we had to pack out the entire house, clean every square inch of it. You know, do a little bit of painting, minor recon, and then put everything back just because the dog jumped up on the range and lit it on fire. So it you just never know where it comes from. Yeah. But Give me some other stories like that. That's that's one of my best fire that's ones. That's a good one. Th those two. Um, I have a horribly tragic one or two. Um, <laughs> if you want one of those. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, but I had a situation where uh, Gilbert's home, has, a lot of them have basements. A lot of people don't realize that, but yeah. there are quite a few in Gilbert that have basements. They actually have soil um, out there right here. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um, they had, I think, two or three acres of property that they were irrigating at the time. Husband and wife go out to dinner, hadn't been in the basement all day, had no reason to suspect anything was wrong. Um, something doing something having to do with a, a groundhog, I think, or, or some or maybe or not a gopher. Oh, a gopher okay. was digging holes and damaged the window, which caused the basement to flood. Um, by oh, the time God. they got home, it was four and a half, five feet of water, mud. Yep. This is irrigation water, so it's nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is actually a safety tip that you should know. If you ever have a flood in your basement or standing water like that, immediately turn off all the electricity to the home because that water becomes electrically charged yep. and creates a severe hazard. On I his birthday, he goes fire. down into the basement without having turned off the electrical breaker, steps foot in the water, electrocuted, dies on the steps. Oh, shit. So now you have... A cat three situation with a biohazard component. You have mud everywhere. Everything is completely total loss in that that scenario. So it's inventoried for reimbursement in that case. And it was it was a horribly tragic situation. Oh God, but yeah. it took weeks just to extract the water and get it sanitized, so that a contents company could even come in yeah. and and fully suit it up, sit there and inventory every single item. That's yeah. definitely the worst one I've heard it's, for sure. It's not DIY. Yeah. It's, yeah. Nope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
No, it's not. And people don't realize that. And like with fires, um, going back to the story with the dog and that cutting board, there are a lot of people with a a small fire like that that think it's, you know, it's no big deal. I'll just clean up the kitchen and and go on about my life. 73% of deaths that occur from fire damage have nothing to do with the fire itself. It's about inhalation of not just smoke, but soot damage as well. And this can occur sometimes days or weeks after the fire takes place. That's why it's so important that when something like that happens, call in a professional. Because even if you can't see it or directly smell it, yeah. there's a good chance that that smoke and soot so is lingering. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of times light structure fires, like you, untrained eye, you can't really tell. You're like, yeah, I had a fire. It's not that bad. You know, right. It's like, okay, well, let let us come out and look at it because we've got different tools where we can, we can figure it out. And then you know, it turns out there's soot on everything in the entire house. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because the firefighters will exhaust it and they'll exhaust it across the house. And so for us, it turns into a big job because now everything in the house is covered in soot. Yep. But they have to do that, you know, to try to clear it out. And And there's, do you have like a machine that tells you like how much soot is in? So we use, uh, (laughs) it's called a chem sponge. Um, It's, and it, you just kind of brush it across and it's going to show black, which is soot or gray, maybe dust. We yep. use uh, gloves, you know, Q-tips, whatever we yeah, can yeah. find it with. And there's also some testing you can do, you know, for presence of soot and such. But huh. that's usually it. The yeah. chem sponge is like the first Works go-to. pretty good, yeah. Going and around to all the vents and it, rubbing that down to yeah, see yeah. because, I mean, it travels through through the ventilation system like that. Right, right. And on the water side, it's the same thing. You know, it, you may clean up the puddle and be like, yeah, we're good. But we come in, we have thermal imaging cameras, moisture meters, yep. you know, invasive, non-invasive techniques. So we're going to find it and we're going to map it out and help you understand it. Yep. Because that's, that's part of the battle is someone, they just don't realize the extent of it. But it's much worse. Yeah. A uh, little backstory. Uh, we forgot to mention this, but Ryan was in the 2030 Club with me for a while and helped us run all of our events and should have been a chairman of ABC. Basically was a chairman. More of an ops guy. More of an ops guy, <laughs> but absolutely crushed it. Um, so when I had a flood in my house, uh, we were actually out of town and the sitter calls and she was like, hey, uh, our dog sitter was like, yeah, so there's a lot of water in the house. I'm like, OK, what does that mean? She's like, I don't know. I'd send somebody. I'm like, oh, shit. OK. So I, immediately I called Ryan. I'm like, hey, man, would you mind go check this out? And he's like, yep, uh, you've got a flood. I'm like, great. And so then you did the moisture check. You guys removed the baseboard. You drilled the holes. You put in the octopus. Yep. Uh, we did the, the, the scrubber, which kept all of the different uh, particles out of the air, which was really cool that we needed because we have our daughter now. So right. that, that obviously was necessary to have. So she wasn't inhaling all that stuff. And and you really just took care of us. So uh, obviously that's kind of why I have you here today is, yeah. you know, you're, you're taking care of your clients and just doing amazing work out there. Um, and and every all, all the insurance people and stuff that you guys work with say the same thing. And so that obviously goes to show like the people in the industry get it and and know who who to be working with um so it's kind of a testament to what you've accomplished and and what you guys are doing out there so thank commend you, you yeah, commend you for that appreciate it yeah we're trying to bring like an ethical approach because yep. in insurance there's a lot of room for for stepping over the line and i just we industry don't for there. fraud right I yeah mean, it's just the easiest thing to Right. to do and it hurts everybody I right. mean, realistically companies will will pad their numbers and they think it's not a big deal but the bottom line is every single insurance company re- reports to a federal reserve of sorts right yep. and based on the over under it depends on if there are rate increases or decreases every year so you know a couple hundred companies pad their numbers a little bit yep. you end up everybody in the country ends up paying more and higher insurance month. rates exactly yeah. right. so it's actually really harmful so that's kind of been our thing and um, water mitigation is so synonymous with uh, not not something good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're trying to really change the game and only work with insurance professionals who are professional and do it by the book, as well as other contractors who who view it the same way. Well, because you guys will have to go actually out to the properties and do your own analysis before having them send other adjusters, correct? We yeah. try to. Yeah. A lot of times we're the first one on site, so right. the insurance company may not even be involved. You know, yep. it's you mm-hmm. woke up two in the morning and you just stepped in two inches of water. Yep. Like, well, that was kind of the case with yeah. my house because, like, yeah, because right, I mean, it wasn't a crazy flood or anything, so I was like, all right, I'll pay out of pocket as opposed to going through insurance. So without having you guys right. come over and actually do that analysis, 
It'd be just kind of like, uh, okay, yeah, insurance company, handle yeah. this, and just completely hands off, and, and the no like, and trust factor of not knowing that person. I was like, right. all right. The well, fact that I got Ryan over at my house, like, I, I know things are going to yeah, work we, out well. Yeah, we had you taken care yeah. of. But, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times, I mean, the insurance company is, is kind of motivated to pay as little as possible, right? So you need a representative that's that's working for you yep. and looking out for your best interests. So yep. that's kind of where we come in. But on the flip side with the insurance company, when they're working with someone with a good reputation they can trust, then they'll listen to us. Yep. It's like, hey, here's the deal. Here's what we need to do. We've got the documentation. It makes it a lot easier for the client because yeah. they're like, okay, I've worked with these guys. You know, They're straight shooters. Let's go. Yep. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on. Yeah, Obviously, this is a service that no one ever wants to use, yeah. <laughs> but it becomes a necessity and a mm. requirement once something happens that's unfortunate for the, that circumstance. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, for people that want to get a hold of you guys, how can they do so? Um, the easiest way is going to be through Facebook or LinkedIn. You can find me, Breon Green. Um, maybe we can spell that out like in the... In yep. the description of the video and we can throw in my phone number um, we also have a website for referrals so if you're not big on phone calls or text messages or something like that you can go to a website that's one click referral dot agency and submit a claim that way um, it pings me it pings dispatch it pings Ryan instantly within seconds so say that again what was that one click referral dot agency okay. Yep, cool. and you just enter the field, so your name, address, phone number, kind of what's going on, hit it. It hits me, it hits Ryan and dispatch, and within minutes, we're on the phone with you. Love it. If someone wants to call you, what's your number? And we're 24-7, so you can call us anytime, but our number is 602-753-3655. So that's going to be a 24-7, always a live person. So you're never gonna get an answering twenty four seven. Yeah, twenty four seven. Yeah, you guys are working hard. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're twenty four seven. That that's a tough part about the business is you have to staff for that. You got to be ready to, for that. You got to pull guys away from their families. So yep. well, we're, we're here for seven a.m. Yeah. on Saturday. Right. Yeah. When well, Brianna was talking about it the other day, she was like, "Yeah, I mean, if you call me at two in the morning, chances are I'll still probably pick up the phone." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So <laughs> if if one of us don't pick up, goes to our uh, live answering service, yep. and then they hound us until we answer. Love it. So there's a whole call tree of like let's just keep dialing until we get them yep you know and yep. they'll get us very cool so awesome well ryan brian thank you so much again square one restoration thanks to thank thanks you so much us. for coming on and uh stay tuned for another episode of break it down Braden. thanks guys appreciate it